Okay, everybody, there you are. Here comes your warm up right there. Make a coordinate plane in all four quadrants on one side of your graph. Uh, well, just on, uh, just on your graph paper going nine each direction. Graph those lines onto your coordinate plane and be on the lookout for something interesting that might happen. I'm gonna start clipping this out, so you're gonna wanna pause it in three, two, one. Okay, everybody, come on up in five, four, three, two, one. Shh. Okay, here we go, guys. So we're going to go ahead and make a coordinate plane that goes nine each direction. I'll put that on a doer. If not, we'll get it figured out. Let's go ahead and do this with some ticks here. Here we go. Get those a little wider. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One and a two and a three and a four and a five, six, seven, eight, nine. And two, nine, seven, three, one, four, five, six. Oh, I missed one. Two. There. Got it. All right. Okay. Here we go. How would I graph these onto my coordinate plane? And let's go ahead and start with number one. And we're going to get number one from, let's see here. That's going to be, nobody sits there or there. Oh, dear. One of these days. Ah, uh, Here we go. Finally, Jack, how would you graph number one? Start at six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good, good. Yeah. Yeah, and you just do it. Excellent. And this standard, the one that we're about to get into, that's this one that we really, backtracking makes a big difference. Backtracking can make a very big difference in getting something right or not. How many of us were able to get that line and aren't too alarmed by that? You guys doing okay? Great. Let's see if I can get a little help. Casey, how am I going to graph numero dos? Uh, what's that? So we're going to start with negative three, down three. Got it? Yeah. Exactly. And then you go down one, left one, down one, left one. You get the idea. So we're going to go ahead and connect those where to line. Here we go. All right. Excellent. Thank you, Casey. How about number three? How are we going to handle number three? Ewan, how are we going to do number three? Got it. Great, great. Exactly so. Over one, two, three, over one, two, three, so on and so forth. And we connect them with a line. Great. And then the last one, y equals two thirds x minus two. How do we graph that, Tiger? How do we graph y equals two thirds x minus two? So we're going to start at negative two. Up two and right three, up two and right three, up two and right three, or down two and left three, down two and left three, so on and so forth. How many of us are able to get all of those lines graphed onto our paper just like this? Did you notice anything interesting about these? Let's see if I can get a little bit of help, and that's going to come from uh, Andre. Yeah, what did you notice about these? Yeah, they all seem to go through the point 3 comma 0, which, by the way, do you guys think there's some mathematical significance to that? Or do you think that was just a fun thing I did so that uh, you could tell if you were doing this right? What do you guys think? Mathematical significance or just a fun thing? <laughs> there is definitely mathematical significance to this, which is what today's lesson is all about. It's the 85th day of uh, school, guys. Do you guys know that in their history of the necktie, 
Thomas Fink and Yang Mao sh also showed that all 85 possible ways to tie a tie, mathematically proving that those are it. That there are 85 ways to tie a tie, and that's it. I mean, it's a book that was basically made for me because it is just all 85 ways you can tie a tie, and then also about whether or not anybody ties their tie this way or if, uh, if there's any history to it. And by the way, it's, what's important to notice is that uh, assuming, of course, that you wrap the wide end around the narrow end, decorum, people, it's kind of like this. I tie a Pratt knot myself. Like uh, most people do like a Windsor or a half Windsor or something like that. And it starts with this. You have to start with your tie inside out. And you go like this. You pinch. Throw that over your shoulder. And then you tuck it back under. Then you push it up through. And then your fingers here are making this little gap. Punch it right in there. Tie it. Tighten. And you're good. I should be good. Yeah. And the idea, guys, is you want your tie to hit your belt buckle. That's about where you want the end of your tie. If it's t higher than that or lower than that, it is not correctly settled. Hello. That's amazing. I'm all for it. Is it this one, the one on Jeopardy? Oh, that's awesome. So there's not, th not the guy on Jeopardy, but that is amazing. Uh, oh, happy house plant appreciation day. Yay. That's awesome. Yay. When I was a lad, I had a little terrarium that I kept uh, as many different types of uh, carnivorous plants that I could fit in there. And so, like, I would just go outside and find bugs and, like, sprinkle them in. Uh, uh, Cactus and Tropical, right down the road. Peyton, you had something you needed to say. So, you were here for Oh, I was in the vents sometimes, but maybe not for this. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's way cool. Perfect timing. It's, uh, it's the day to appreciate them, and maybe they appreciate you as well. What is our first essential question? And I would love to get that from, uh, go ahead, Andre. What's our first essential question today? Go ahead and write that down for me, guys. What is a system of equations? And what does it mean? to solve one. Our Jeopardy today is the NBA All-Star voting leaders. This power forward, number 34 on the Bucks, is sometimes known as the Greek Freak. He's 6 foot 11 inches and currently number 2 in the voting with 2,998,327 votes. That is Giannis Antetokounmpo. That is correct. Giannis Antetokounmpo. I think so. Isn't that correct? I think I'm saying it right. Antetokounmpo? Antetokounmpo? Atentecumpo? Atentecumpo, perhaps. And then uh, on Pictionary, of course, that's a koala. A koala on Pictionary. All right. <laughs> Moving right along. Come on up in five, four, three, two, one. Here we go, guys. Let's see here. I need not this one. There you are. All right, everybody. Got a pencil? Our topic today, that was a good absolutely. And I think you guys are doing an awesome job so far. I think you guys do deserve a point for that. And I think you deserve one for the warm-up as well. Thank you. For, thanks for doing awesome on that warm-up, guys. That's great. Okay, so today's topic is systems of equations. Systems of equations. Guys, if you have one of my little pieces of graph paper, I want you to turn it to the blank side, and I want you to turn it so that it is tall. I want you to turn it so that it is tall. Okay, we're going to make a coordinate plane on here, and it needs to be taller than it is long. Got it? So it needs to be taller than it is long. It's only going to be in quadrant one. It is only in quadrant one, and it is going to go... 20 up and 12 right. So, hmm. 
one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, ten, one, two, three, four, fifteen, one, two, three, four, twenty. And a tickety tick tick in the middle. While we're making this, guys, what were some of the things you suggested were in the Dubcoin store? You didn't do it? Oh, dang it. That's too bad. That's pretty good. A drill. <laughs> Cash. Back when wa back when dub coin were physical, I know um uh the going rate was like it was like the exchange rate was like two for a buck. Like you could buy them off your friends two for a buck. Yeah, that was. Uh, That's one of the reasons we got rid of the uh, physical ones. <laughs> because kids were paying each other for them, and that uh. Is not good. <laughs> Does he really? That's awesome. Oh, uh, it wasn't. It wasn't good because uh, kids with Dubcoin were selling them to their friends for cash, and I'm pretty sure that's not a good thing. Yeah, Jack. Oh yes, absolutely. Oh, uh, that happened once. <laughs> a drone that's pretty good like for like 200 or something that makes sense to me yeah that makes total sense to me anyway let's see what we got here guys you guys have this coordinate plane down okay then let's get started here we go today we start we're going to finish this up tomorrow this is going to be a two-day kind of lesson thing a tale of three cars two apes and one carrot yeah. it's three cars two apes and one carrot Let's start with three cars, guys. I'm going to show you pictures of the three cars. They're going to go by pretty fast. Let me see if you can correctly identify the make and model of these vehicles as they hit their air. Ready? There you go. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Members of Mr. Peterson's family are deeply in love with their cars and very defensive about them. Each has a different fuel tank capacity and gas mileage. To make things easier, we'll discuss gas mileage as gas used every hour while driving 60 miles per hour. So we're all driving the same speed, and each car is going to use gas for, those, uh, for each hour. So that means that if one car gets better gas mileage than another, it will use more or less gallons of gas each hour. It's going to use... Less gallons of gas each hour. Mr. Peterson, his brother, and his wife fill up their cars at a gas station and hit the road to visit Mr. Peterson's other brother who lives in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Car one, Mr. Peterson. Which of those three cars do you think was mine? Yeah, there was this one. Well, that was a Subaru what? A Subaru Outback. Mr. Peterson and his Subaru Outback Sport. Mr. Peterson drives a Subaru Outback Sport, which has a fuel tank of a capacity of 17 gallons and uses two gallons of gas each hour on the road. Can you write an equation to represent how much gas I have left in the tank each, uh, depending on how many hours I drive? And then can you graph that equation? So write an equation that shows how much gas do I have left in the tank and then graph that equation. Give it a shot and here we go. Beep, beep, teach. Yes. So it's it's actually uh, I'm I can't do anything about my gas mileage. I'm using two gallons every hour. So my gas tank is full. I have 17 after an hour of driving. How much do I have? Less gas an hour. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <coughs> There you go. 
And then should this be a solid line or a dashed line? Solid. I agree. Perfect. Now go ahead and graph that on here. Uh, can, I, can I tell you, Peyton, I know you probably don't want to redo this, but you're really going to want this today. You're really going to want this today. You're really going to want You too, Caitlin. I know you don't want to remake that, but you're really going to want graph paper today. You really are. Like, this unit, graph paper, is, like, essential. Yeah, you are really just making your life a lot harder if you're not using graph paper, guys. I can give you some glue so you can glue it in if you really want to. I'm into that. I like that. I like that. Okay. Can I get you back up here in five, four, three, two, one? My real outback is actually silver, not that uh, not that orange color. Uh, so I know it's hard to say here, but we're gonna go Peterson. Peterson's outback. So what was the equation you came up for? Come up with for my how much gas I've got left. What was the equation you came up with, Chris? How many of us got an equation that was something like y equals 17 minus 2x? Beautiful. Let's go ahead and get that graphed in a Scottish accent. All right, Tio, how am I going to graph uh, y equals 17? Oh, you hardly read that, can you? Let's see here. Let me darken that up a bit. So y is equal to 17 minus 2x. Beg your pardon. Go ahead. How am I going to graph that there? All right, up here at 17. All right. All right, because I lose two gallons every hour, and I just go ahead and Put that on there, and a wee. Did I mess up? Oh, I uh, did mess up, didn't I? Because I counted every two of my boxes as one. So I really need, for me, I need to go down two, over one. But I counted every one of these boxes as one. Down two, over one. Down two, over one. Yeah, so it would be a little more visible. That was the mistake I made. It's because each two counts as one if you look down here. See, every, on my x-axis, every two boxes counts as one, because otherwise it would be hard to see. You didn't have to do that, but there we go. Now, guys, I asked you if we should use a solid line or a, a dashed line to represent this. The difference is, do the things in between make sense? So at the end of every hour, do I just magically lose two gallons of gas, or has it been gradually going down the whole time? I, it's been gradually going down the whole time, so we would use a solid line to represent that gradual decrease in gas. Which makes it sound like we're doing like a commercial for like uh, gas X or something like that, right? The solid line shows the gradual decrease in gas, no matter how much broccoli you eat. All right, anyway. <laughs> Different kind of gas. <laughs> All right. Let's see here, guys. Let's talk about Lars. Does anyone recognize that vehicle? I. It's a Hyundai, but what kind? <laughs> I don't think that. I think that might be uh, San Francisco. No, it's a Hyundai Elantra. Mr. Uh, Lars and his hybrid Elantra, which is that red color. Mr. Peterson's brother Lars drives a hybrid Hyundai Elantra, which has a fuel tank capacity of 11 gallons and only uses one gallon of fuel per hour. Represent how much gas is in Lars's tank as an equation and a graph. Go ahead, guys. Would you I'll use the same axes, by the way. I'm not a monster here. Don't make a new coordinate plane. Go ahead, guys. How much gas is left in an equation and a graph? Give it a shot, and here we go. Oh, good luck with that, Lars. Teach. So I want that line to go all the way 
all the way. Trust me on this. You want that line to go all the way down, all the way down. Take him all the way. That's going to be a really critical thing to this unit, is taking your lines all the way down. Aye. Nidhi, what could I do for you, lass? Mr. Peterson, what does a dashed line look like? Oh, so a dashed line is just like, uh, if you had these points here, It would be like a dashed line like that. And that's to represent when the things in between don't make sense. Like if I'm eating live frogs, and this is keeping track of how many frogs are left depending on how long I've been doing it, you can't have half a live frog. So the points in between don't make sense. You either have a live frog or you don't. Aye, because that doesn't make sense. That's a time traveling car. <laughs> That somehow gets gas as it travels back in time. That's very impressive. <laughs> I think that's a Nobel Prize right there. <laughs> Aye. I didn't think anyone would have gotten the high The Alonso, uh, really? Yeah. They're a very popular car, are they not? They also just look like every other car in the universe. <laughs> Aye. That's cool. Is that like an electromagnet or something? That's awesome. Oh, sure. I know. It's easy. Okay, everybody. Having a little too much fun with the rulers there. Okay, here we go. We'll get this in a nice crimson color for Lars's Hyundai Elantra. So let's go ahead and put the cubes away. Guys, I'm introducing this new topic. Do try to pay attention here. So we've got Lars's Elantra. We've got Lars's Elantra. So what was the equation you came up with for Lars's Elantra there? Frankie, what was the equation you came up with there? Uh, that's bonnet. Y equals 11 minus X. He even, he even got rid of that invisible one. And that'll be five minutes for the Scott, by the way. So how are we going to graph Y equals 11 minus X? Go ahead, Clara. Mm-hmm. Yeah, down one, right one. Oops. Yeah, down one, right one, down one, right one, down one, right one. I think I made a mistake somewhere. Oh yeah, that'll do it every time. Good job, Mr. Peterson. Wah, wah. Start at 11, down one, right one. That's better. I was like, that doesn't, s I don't remember that being the answer. Because I don't know if you guys noticed, the last time I edited this thing was uh, 2018. And so this one, you know, normally I say like, oh, I don't have the answers memorized. I do have the answers memorized for this one. So I was a little surprised to see that. How many of us were able to get that without too much trouble? You guys doing okay out there? Okay, which brings us to our last vehicle. Which is Miss Allander. Bam. Oh. Miss Allander in her Chevy Silverado. Mr. Peterson's lovely wife, Miss Allander, drives a pretty rad Chevy Silverado pickup truck. Yes, her name is Miss Allander, no, not Mrs. Peterson. She kept her name because, let's face it, it's cooler. It is cooler. Like, it is an objectively cooler name. The truth is, I should have changed mine <laughs> so that I would have a cooler name, too. Uh, anyway, yes, Miss Allender's vehicle is more manly than Mr. Peterson's, and yes, she lets me know that all the time. There's no need to bring it up. Anyway, her Silverado has a fuel tank capacity of 20 gallons, but it actually uses five gallons of fuel every two hours on the road. Five gallons of fuel every two hours on the road. Represent the fuel that she's got left as an equation and a graph. By the way, voices, guys, voices. Do I want that slope as a fraction or as a decimal? I want it as a fraction. I want it as an improper fraction, please. Give it a shot, and here we go. Teach. Yeah, yeah, um, 
do 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 I always forget what time we get out of this bar. We're doing great. Solid still. Solid still, because she's slowly losing gas every hour. Oh, boy. I sure hope that's marker. <laughs> I just picked up a red tissue, so I'm just a, I'm hoping it's a marker and not a bloody nose. I think you're right. Well, two out of three ain't bad. So my dad's got a big Ford Escort. Yeah, buddy. Forty-seven gallons. That's amazing. What, what kind of mileage does it get? Like eleven? Sixteen. That's pretty good for a truck like that. Big honker like that. What's that? That's wild. Well, yeah, with a with a I mean, I feel like that that fuel tank's like behind it in a trailer or something, which doesn't sound safe, but see, that's true. I like that because is it an older truck? Uh, 2017. 2017. Because I feel like all these newer trucks have a tiny bed, but like 30 seats, and I'm like confused about why it's a truck. <laughs> yeah, somebody, somebody is, a, somebody get any man out there? What's that? I think I did. It's like a Hummer truck. I, I just saw one and I was like, I was asking the missus. What the heck is that thing? Is that a Humber? Hummy? Humvee? And she said, I think so. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, can I get you back up here in five, four, three, two, one? Peyton, what did you get for the equation for how much gas is left in my lovely wife's amazing truck? Yeah, exactly, because you probably knew that it was two and a half uh, ga uh, uh, gallons per hour that we were using in gas, but we need to turn that into a fraction to make it five halves so that we can graph it a little more easily. Trace, how would I graph y equals 20 minus 5 halves x? Start at 20. Start at 20. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 117, 118, now we connect. Let's see here. Let's see. Perfect. I think my gray line's a little bit out of whack to make the point, but there we go. There we go. Okay, so it should look something a little bit like this. How many of us have got a graph that looks something like this? So this is what I was asking in your warm-up, and I think we can use the story to help understand what's going on. When I say teach, I want you to say, okay, there is a mathematical significance to this point, the place where all three lines intersect. What is that place, by the way? Keenan, what are, what, what are the coordinates of that point where they all intersect? Uh, so this five, I think? Six, comma, five. Should be six, comma, five. Now, guys, that actually means something about our story. How many of us think they know what that means about our story? When I say teach, I want you to say, okay, is it 6-6? Six, six? I think it's 6. Is it 6-6? Six, six? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Should be 6-5. Should be 6-5. Should be 6-5. What? That's why it's really important to get your graph paper going. When I say teach, you're going to say, okay, what does that coordinate mean about our story? Teach. Yeah, six five. We're good.
Okay. Can I get you back up here in five, four, three, two, one? Caitlin, what is the significance here? What does six and five have anything to do with trucks and gas and road trips? That is exactly right. This means, got a pencil? Absolutely. After six hours of driving, each car has five gallons left. Sounds like a good point to stop and, uh, uh, exactly, I agree. Also, six hours just seems like a good amount to drive and then stop. So this is what a system of equations is. A system of equations is a group of equations. And if we graph them and find the place they intersect, because every line is, a, is just a collection of points that make that thing true. So the place that they intersect is the place that makes them all true. How many of us feel like we've got that there? You guys feeling okay about that? I'll tell you right now, guys, this is big. Like, how many of us feel like I could just give you two equations and you could tell me where they intersect? That is a system of equations, and that is how you get a three on your skill check when we return from break. Okay? Not the, not the same day. Like, we'll probably do, like, a day of practice, a day of review, and then do the skill check when we return. Anyway, guys, that's all we got time for. Here's what I want you to do. Starting with a person all the way to your right. You're going to do something, and then you're going to name something, and then the next person's going to try to name something, and the next person's going to try to name something. If you repeat it, that's who's going to bring me my rulers. If you can't think of one within three seconds, you're the one who's going to do it. And I'll tell you right now, the thing you're going to be naming is types of cars. Go. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tiger. Oh, those of you at home.